Well, welcome, 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 welcome to another Bible study here at yeah. Psalm 91. Yeah. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Well, um, First Lady, why don't you uh, just open us up in a word of prayer? All righty. Let us look to the Father. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this another day. We thank you, Father, for bringing us together to go into your word, to dive in deep, God. Help reveal yourself to us, God. Help us to understand you better in ways that we are to obey you. And to keep your commandments, Lord. We ask that you bless and keep each and every person. Yes, God. Help us to understand you better. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I'll read it. All right. Well, well, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. For to Bible say those that are in the building. Just give God a hand clap for praise. Glory to God. Uh, Mama, though, you were just singing. You got a song on your heart, Mama. <laughs> Go ahead, Mama. Lord, give, you are good. Give Mama a mic. Give Mama a mic. So good. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you. Yes, God. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try on. You've been so good to me. Lord, you are mm -hmm. good. You've been so good. If you can stand your feet, stand. Lord, you, you are good. good. You've been you better than good. I can't break you enough. Oh, oh. study of the book of Acts. That's how the first church was established. Yes. And, um, you know, we've been getting into some meaty truths. And so uh, we want to continue along in this thing. We have gotten through chapters 1 through 15 of the Amen. book of Acts. Amen. And um, tonight, tonight we're going we're gonna to mix things up just a little bit. Okay. We're, we're still going to jump into chapter 16. Um, uh, but we're going to do some do some things a little different tonight. So, um, <clears throat> so just uh, continue with us for a little while. Let's do a quick recap of chapter 16. Does anyone remember what took place in chapter 16? We have it on the screen so you can cheat. Then, <laughs> all right, in chapter 16. Paul. Right. Go ahead. Uh, the Apostle Paul wants to take on uh, Timothy, and he wants to bring him to the next his next uh, mission yep. um, but he decides to have him circumcised first uh, so that not necessarily because of the law but because uh, so that they be uh, well received and they can actually uh, get the word across you know so that the people will be willing to hear. Amen. Thank you. And what we find in chapter 15 um, Paul who is with um, Barnabas right Paul who is with Barnabas they're getting such contention from the Jewish believers. So that's going to be um, Jew, the, 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 the Jewish converts, those who uh, were of the um, Hebrew um, lineage, who had converted to Christianity, but they were still wanting to hold on to a lot of the, uh, the, the, the law of Moses, the law of Moses. And so one of the things that happened is that as they were converting Gentiles, so a Gentile, will we, um, does anybody remember what the Gentile was? How we define a Gentile? Yes. What's he mean? No, uh, some Gentiles could be mean. Amen. Mm, somebody who wasn't um, originally, uh, somebody who converted to Christianity but isn't a Jew. Okay. Um, so 
we're getting close, we're getting close. So Gentiles were classified. So there's two different classifications of Gentiles in the Bible. Um, the first was a non-Jew, right? We talked about mm-hmm. that the Gentile was a non-Jew. But more specifically, if you search the scriptures, you'll find that the Gentiles, when they refer to, in, in, the, in the Bible, they refer to Gentiles, they typically refer to, I mean, you, you know, what we would say were the European um, non, um, n- uh, non-Jews, non right? So, for instance, when we talk about Philip, Philip was visited by the Ethiopian. Philip had, uh, or vi- the Holy Spirit brought Philip to the Ethiopian, right? The, yeah. the, the steward of um, uh, Queen Candace of uh, Ethiopia, and he began to speak the gospel to him. And there was never any contention about this happening because in the Bible, they, they didn't view, when they, they, when they said Gentile, they considered that like wicked people, heathens, mm-hmm. right? So they viewed the Romans as Gentiles. Mm-hmm. They viewed the Greeks as Gentiles. And so when, when, um, and when we say Greeks, everybody who was Greek was not necessarily considered a Gentile. Because just like uh, um, when uh, a lot of the European nations took over parts of Africa, right? There were, there were um, Africans that had, there were certain Africans in certain countries that had French. They speak French, right? Because that government took over. So there were, there were uh, uh, because of under Alexander the Great, they conquered much of the world. So a lot, there were a lot of territories that were Greek speaking, territories in Africa, territories even in Greece, um, where there were people of color. But when they talked about Gentiles, and we went to in great detail a couple of weeks ago about that, when they talked about Gentiles, they referred to, they were talking about the um, those northern, the, that northernmost um, people, because they considered them wicked. And in fact, as we go through the book of Acts, you're going to see some of the practices that, that they said, hey, to the Gentiles, that was not normal for especially peoples of um, the other um, nationality. So, right? So, like the, the, the Philistines were the enemies of God, but they weren't considered Gentiles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Right? The Egyptians were the enemies of God, but they were never referred to as Gentiles. Okay. Okay? The okay. first mention of the word Gentile is a, is a mention of the northern. And that's in the book of um, Genesis. The first time they mentioned mm-hmm. Gentiles, and it's of the, the, um, the um, yeah. So anyway, so we have this dynamic going on. And so what's happening is, at, at some point, Paul has to instruct the Gentiles, hey, listen, okay, you don't have to get circumcised. You don't have to go through all of these things. Um, not just Paul, but Paul and Barnabas go to the church leaders, and they seek counsel on this. They say, hey, we need this, because these Jews are trying to make these Gentiles, after they get converted, they're trying to make them get circumcised. And so <clears throat> so that's where, where we find ourselves. So they made they, they, they ruled that it was okay that they not be circumcised. They said, but you cannot drink blood, because this is a practice. This is one of the, this is one, the reason why it's even mentioned in chapter 15, is that you cannot drink blood. Or eat things that have been sacrificed to idols, because that was a, a heathenistic practice that was practiced among many of those Gentiles. All right. So anyway, so um, quick. So we talked about Timothy last week. Timothy is a young preacher. So the book of Timothy was written by about this young man, or like two. There was a letter to this young man who starts on this journey with Paul and Silas. Now by this time, Paul and Barnabas have split. Am I right? Paul and Barnabas mm-hmm. split, yeah. and they split because John Mark deserted them. John Mark was the nephew of Barnabas. Barnabas was like, "Hey, look, all right, now let's go back and let's go back and do the Lord's work." And Paul's like, "Nah, I can't trust this dude in the field, so I'm not going to go anywhere with him." So let's speed, speed up a little bit. Um, so Paul was so dogmatic about preaching the gospel that he um, was like, "He looked Timothy." Even though we're not making this a mandate that believers get circumcised, they won't even let us in the door yeah. because your father is Greek. Your yeah. mom is Jewish. Your father is Greek. So if you get circumcised, they'll let us in the door so that we can preach the gospel. Yeah. And that's what happened. Now, they traveled to Phrygia. 
we're going to um, bypass that. Paul gets a vision um, of a man from Macedonia. Macedonia was in northern Greece. And this man in, uh, in this vision says, come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided uh, to leave for Macedonia, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news. All right. Now, um, when they board it, they go on. To, can somebody take verse 11? We're just going to start reading from there. We boarded a boat at Troas and sailed straight across to the island of Samothrace. And the next day we landed at Neapolis. From there we reached Philippi, a major city of, the, of that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city of a, to a riverbank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. And we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. And this is something that we pointed out last week. The Bible says that the Lord opened her heart. Understanding that the only time, when we, if the day you came to the Lord, God had to open your heart. Yes. The day you gave your life to the Lord, God was the one who was opening your heart. Mm -hmm. So even that time was there was God was active in me coming to Him. It wasn't just my decision. I just didn't make this decision. God had to open my heart to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, verse fifteen. Somebody take that. She and her household were baptized, and she asked us to be her guest. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she urged us until we agreed. So Lydia, or Lydia um, is this woman of God. She's working and she receives the Lord. And immediately she's like, hey, listen, these are men of God. Please, you know, I I'll let you stay and have a, a room at my house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men! <coughs> These men are son of the Most High! They have come to tell you how to be seen. Now this went on day after day until Paul got exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and instantly it left her. So as soon as he said this, he spoke to this demon. How, how many people understand that there are some, there are sometimes there are people who will praise God, but it's not of God. Mm -hmm. There are people, she is literally saying what you think she should be saying. But it's not in alignment. Somehow the Spirit of God was aggravated in Paul at what she was saying. You, If you read the words, you say, Paul, what's up? Mm -hmm. Paul, she was just praising God. Mm -hmm. And there are times, how many people have ever been in an instance where somebody had, where you were in a service and somebody began to, to operate and it, they, they're saying the right things, but it wasn't in the right order. Right, right, yeah. And you have to have discernment to be able to see mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I command you, she, she, every day, these men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come to tell you how to be saved. Notice in verse 16, she earned a lot of money for her masters by telling them fortunes. Understand that as we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, some people are going to lose some money. Wow. There are people who reject the gospel because of what it costs them. Because of what it cost them, because they're not, because it's gonna, because when somebody's life is changed and they walk away from the things that they used to do, that 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 that's that's hitting your your uh, that that's hitting your your, your button. It's like your, your bottom line. Uh huh. So so they're they're not only they're not excited this this, this woman got delivered. But let's read on a little bit. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews. They shouted to the city officials. And he, now remember, this is a, a, a dialogue, not a monologue. So if you have questions, 
Just raise your hand or, you know, type it in the chat. We'll try as best as possible. One day as we were going down to the place of prayer. No, that's... They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas. And the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. Think about that. They got somebody delivered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they got beaten for it. Mm -hmm. How many of us understand that there are some times when we stand for God, it's going to hurt us? Mm. Wow. Yeah. There are some times when we stand up for God. Yes. Um, I'm, confused about the, I'm confused about the part where you say that um, their teaching customs were illegal. Yep. So, so mind you where they are, right? They, they, they're, they're teaching things that don't agree with the people of that land. They're, they're bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. And it's the, these folks who were making money off of these practices or these idol worship, they're sitting there like, hey, hold on a second. The, you know, they're, they're coming up with accusations. Right. Now, normally people could come and share their faith, their beliefs. But now when people see how, hey, look, this is costing me money. You know, I, I, um, I know of a person who, uh, who the Lord hit them and they gave up, they gave up drinking, right? They gave up, you know, alcohol. Well, how, how, what do you think about the, 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 the bar owner? Too many people give up alcohol. Mm, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Yes. So, so is this before the church was made in Rome? Before um, Christianity became popular within Rome? So... That's a, that's a, um, yes. The answer, short answer to that is yes. Right? And so we're going to, we'll dig a little deeper into that. And, and, cause there, so when we talk about the church and we talk about the Roman church, it, we have to, we have to make a distinction. Right? Um, we'll go into that in a second. Yes, Minister? Um, Thanks for that. That's a good question, Jay. Um, yeah, I just, I thought it was strange that they didn't have a problem with this woman. Declare, or this girl declaring that hey these are servants of the most high and they're preaching you know how to be saved they were okay with that but when it came down to deliverance mm -hmm. they had a problem with that deliverance message wow mm -hmm. you know um, anyone else have anything to <clears throat> think about this you know in, in our life, there are going to be people who once signed off on us. Wow. Who are then going to talk against us. Wow. Wow. Right? Now, this woman, she just said that they were men of God. Mm -hmm. And then when they cast the demon out, you know, that validation that she just gave apparently from her, her bosses is untrue. And so we, have, we see that the animosity when you bring change and deliverance to someone's life, right? The, what, what, see, see, deliverance, deliverance happens. See, if people just go to church, some people can go to church and never be delivered. Mm. And so what's happening with the gospel being preached is that deliverance is coming, right? All right, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them. Now, these folks are... Um, if the, the, the city officials are the ones hearing it from the business owners. Because the business owners are like, hey, this deliverance is messing me up. Yeah. Huh. And this is just like, remember when Jesus cast out the demons out of the man named Legion? Yes. Indeed. Right? And then the, yes. the, the, the demon said, hey, look, let us go into these pigs. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened? The people Turned from Jesus out. Jesus. kicked Jesus out. Because their money was now affected. When our money is affected, can we still follow Christ? Wow. Wow. When, when it's going to hurt my status, can we still follow Christ? Now the Bible says that they, the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. Can you imagine that? 
You just help somebody. And you get beaten with wooden rods. Wow. They were severely beaten. And then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered. Listen to this. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Girls, if you could come here, please. Now I got this makeshift stock. in the socks and the socks were where they put their feet in this wooden um, this wooden plank right they would put chains were put on them now you're doing the right thing and all of a sudden you're experiencing chains wow you're doing the right thing and all of a sudden you're isolated all of a sudden everybody has left you you're being punished Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Mm -hmm. And the other prisoners were listening. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now they are in chains and their feet are in the stocks, but they keep singing. Mm -hmm. Do it again, a little bit louder, because now the prisoners are listening. Mm -hmm. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't, I can't praise, praise you enough. See, there are times in our life when, when, when life seems like it's got us down and we can't move. God says, use what you can. They couldn't use their feet. They couldn't use their hands. He says, use your mouth. And as they began to use their mouth, something happened. Continue. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You're very good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you. Silas had to shake him 
They say, hey, don't be silent, Silas. Let us pop. Let's praise God. Yeah. Let's sing him in the midst of our trials. Come on now. Yeah. 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 Sing him. Sing praise. The Bible says they were praying. They didn't let it stop their connection with God. Yes, yes. Hmm. Around midnight, suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors opened immediately, or all the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Understand that your song of praise yes. in the midst is not just about your chains. Yes. Yes. That your praise can drop the chains on other people. That when we push past, and listen, when I when I add prayer and praise together, uh-huh. see, see, most of the times we're told to just praise. Right? But prayer is that intimate connection with yes. God. Yes. And I'm not letting my, I'm not letting, uh, 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 uh any of the challenges in life, yes. disconnect that. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Lord, you are good. Amen. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You are better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Your car just got repossessed. You just lost your job. God said, come on, what are you going to do? Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. See, you got to be able to, you got to be able to shake those chains off. And the, the funny thing is that they didn't open the doors. God created automatic doors before Come a man on. even Come put on. a man in the door. Come on. Now, now check this piece out. Thank you, girl. Verse 27, the jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. Now, I want you to understand this. Let's check this jail out real quick. Verse 24, so the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. This was some extra stuff. Yes. Yeah. This was extra. The jailer decides to do, go above and beyond and be nasty to them. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped. So he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do? What did he say? Amen. The same one who treated you wrong. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Listen, you're pressed in the midst of persecution. You're pressed in the midst of of, of everybody leaving you. You're pressed. Listen, this is bigger than you. Yes. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. Uh Mm Uh-huh. This man, you got to think about this. The whole time they were singing, before he fell off to sleep, he probably said, they crazy. Mm-hmm. 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 When he woke up, he fell asleep an unbeliever, and he woke up a believer. Wow. Amen. Wow. Yeah. They were so loud that the other prisoners heard them. Now, they didn't join in. Here's a, here's a kingdom principle. One can put a thousand to flight. Mm-hmm. Two can put ten thousand. Oh, yes. That's why the enemy tries so hard to keep us separate mm-hmm. and uh-huh. isolated. That's why, he, that's why he wants so much for you to not be a, a, a he wants so much 
for you to not be lock and step and, 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 be, and be connected with the household of faith. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want you connected because he understands the power in connection. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. You mean to tell me, God, that if I praise and I and I can and I pray and, and I get I get my partner to do that too? I get the, the, my, my brother and sister in Christ to do that too. Mm-hmm. You mean to tell me walls will fall? We just talked about that on Sunday. Mm-hmm. That the right. praises of God as they walked around Jericho, as they shouted. Yes. Mm-hmm. He didn't have a key, but he understands what the key was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, when you, when you lose your keys... When you lose your keys, you lose access. Mm. And what do we say? The keys wow. keys don't open doors. Keys unlock them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, your your voice is a key. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. But 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 your praise is turning that key yeah. and turning that knob, and it's opening that door. And it's breaking those chains. I, he says. Uh, he says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. Yes. Mm-hmm. When you don't feel like you're even worthy to use that voice, God says, "Keep on talking." Yeah. Because yeah. those chains are falling. Mm-hmm. Every time I say good, when I say good morning, Father, every day I'm looking more like you, God. Every day I'm sounding more like you. Yeah. Every day I'm talking more like you, and I declare that in the morning. Every day, God, every day, God, I, I look more like you. Every day, I sound more like you. Every day, I walk more like you. Yes. Amen. Yes. The enemy don't want you to use your mouth. Mm-hmm. Nope. Mm-hmm. Nope. See, if he can get us to complain mm-hmm. and say, oh, my goodness, God, how would you do? Why would you? Why, God? Why? Why me? Anybody ever said, why me? Mm-hmm. Yep. Why it seem like this thing is not working for me, God? And, and, and he's, he's showing us the principle. First of all, listen, this would not have happened had they not been in the will of God. And in the will of God, remember, in being in the will of God, sometimes you're doing the unpopular thing. Yes. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Now check this out, y'all. Because I saw this earlier and and this blew my mind. Even at that hour, this is midnight, right? Am I right? That's what we said, midnight. The jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Wow. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. Mm-hmm. Wow. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And his, his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. Mm-hmm. The next morning, the city officials sent the police to, to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said, you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. <laughs> so he takes them home he feeds them and yeah. he brings them back to jail <laughs> he takes them home he feeds them Clean their wounds. cleans their wounds see God is going to send the most unlikely soul wow. to help bring healing wow. to you wow It could have been one of the inmates, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was the one who put him there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Can you get past the person who put you there? Ooh. Mm-hmm. My God. Mm. Wow. Can you get past wow. the person who put you there? Mm-hmm. Who put you in pain? Mm-hmm. The next morning, the city official sent the police to tell the jailer, let those men go. Somebody take verse 36 and 37. So the, j- oh, good. so the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said, you and Silas are free to leave, go in peace. 
But Paul replied, they have publicly beaten us without, without a trial and put us in prison, and we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> Let them come themselves to release us. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to catch this. See, what they didn't know, uh -huh. what they didn't know mm -hmm. was that Paul and Silas were Roman uh -huh. citizens. Yep. So the yep, best yep, way yep. to put that is that they had a privilege card. Ah, uh -huh. Here we go, here we go. So uh, during this time, uh, the Romans occupied the land. The Romans occupied the land. Um, but as they occupied the land, basically, if you had enough money, you could buy your citizenship. Mm -hmm. Paul, coming from a wealthy Jewish family, had a dual citizenship. Wow. So he was both an Israelite, uh -huh. a Jew, but he was he also had privileged status. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Now what that meant was that regular people could not take a Roman to court. Ah. So if you weren't a Roman, <laughs> you could not charge a Roman. Wow. Wow. Paul says, now a lot of folks have said, well Paul, let it go. Paul <laughs> says, no. <laughs> he says, they have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. And we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly. Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. Mm -hmm. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. God is going to have... I'm telling you, see, listen. So, see, see, so, we, need, we need to hear this thing prophetically. Yes, yes. yes. Listen, there are so many times in the Bible where God is speaking something to us. Uh -huh. God yeah. is speaking something to us. Mm -hmm. Say it again, Mama. Go ahead. Set the table for your enemies. Yes. The Bible says he would set the table, prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. He would My set God. the table. Mm -hmm. In the presence of your enemy. Yeah. You know, when God, when God makes your enemies have to <clears throat> eat humble pie. Mm -hmm. Wow. I tell the testimony from time to time of I worked for I worked for a company that did me extremely wrong. And there was and and, and, and I went back and forth with this company and um uh, you know and for two years, for two years, I was fighting mm -hmm. this, this this illegal battle with this particular company. Some of y'all watching know what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> and uh, for two years, and right before, like I got, a, a, you know, I was, I was going, I was going against the courts. I mean, you know, going to the courts about this thing. And the court said, "Hey, listen, they found that the company did me wrong, but they said, but we're not going to have them bring you back to work." And I said, like, how, how does that make sense? You determined legally that they were legally wrong. And I was ready to quit. I said, you know, maybe I just need to stop fighting. And I talked to a friend of mine. And I can't, this is why something, he said, he said, look, John, something about this don't feel right. He said, John, there's got to be somebody that they answer to. And it was like a light bulb had turned on. Mm -hmm. And I just did one quick search. And I found out that you can call, contact your senator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I, and I contacted a higher authority. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. And they said, we're going to look into this thing. And, and fast forward the, the whole thing. By the time it was all over, the company had to write a letter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. saying that they did me wrong. Come on. And that they had to make me whole. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they had to post it for 90 yes. days yes. for the everybody in the company to see. Yes. And they had to post it in every common area. <laughs> it could not be, oh, we, we don't put it behind the door. They had to post it for everyone to see. And I had no lawyer. I need you to understand this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Come on now. All I had was my faith. 
Yeah. And I wouldn't let it go. Yeah. I said, no, John, they did you wrong. Yeah. Amen. And he made it out, and people called me. Oh my God, John, people are surrounding this letter. They can't believe it. They thought they had you. And see, this is the thing I need you to say. I win. <laughs> I, listen, I have a winning mindset. Yes, yes. Because I trust God. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes. God had those that made themselves his, their enemies come back and apologize. Mm-hmm. So they came to the jail and apologized to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. Mm-hmm. When God flips the table. Come on, come on. Yes. Yes. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned, returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. Let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk from this perspective. Have you ever, and I want to I hear from you. And those that are watching online, you can chime in. We had a couple of comments I got to make sure we catch up with. And, 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 and um, What has been the difficulty? Somebody share a real experience. And you don't have to share an experience, but maybe like how you felt going through an experience. Where you felt difficulty praising God in the midst of a challenge. Mm. You felt it difficult to praise God. I will be the first volunteer. I was in my mid twenties. My, my I was engaged to my wife, and you know, I, my the, the job wasn't going too well that I was at at the time. I, you know, the the, the, the job had uh, dried up. I wasn't making any money. I felt dejected. In fact, my wife at the time we were going to visiting um, Pastor Lawrence and Pastor Lawrence out there in uh, um, Living Waters. Amen. Yeah. And we were visiting their Bible study, and and I li- I didn't want to hear from God. I didn't I, I didn't want to hear nothing about church or God. And I remember saying that. I remember saying that we were at the Dunkin' Donuts after the Bible study, and and I remember saying she was like, but John, God, you you know you, you just gotta trust God. And I said and, and I said it out my mouth. Listen, I don't want to hear about that right now. I wanted to be angry. Mm-hmm. I felt disappointed in God. I felt like he had not shown up for me. Mm-hmm. I felt like I had done, I've been faithful. I felt like I've been doing all of these things and I felt like God didn't show up for me. And my wife, I always tell this, what did you do, honey? Um, I, I just heard on, on the radio myself about, you know, when you're, when you're down and discouraged, go back on what God has done for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said, actually, write this down. And so that's what I asked you to do. I said, I said, John, can you write down just some of the things that God has done for you? He said five things. I did say five? Okay. Yeah, just five. Mm-hmm. By the time I got to three, I felt so embarrassed. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, because she was going to, she was going to, I felt nag me until I did it. <laughs> <laughs> But I felt so embarrassed. I felt so embarrassed. I, by the time I said, oh my goodness, yeah. I prayed for that, he gave me that. I prayed for that, he you were driving that for me. Sports car. I was driving, I had asked for a sports car and I had no sports car money. And God blessed me. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, listen, our parents say things to us. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it takes, it takes our life experience for us to fully understand it. Yes. Yes. You know, we would save ourselves so much time if we just listened to what they said. Mm-hmm. So much headache. So much yeah. headache. Yes. So, so can someone share a time? Well, listen, it was hard to praise. Mm-hmm. Or, or praise was not necessarily, or prayer was not the, your first option. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me first. Go ahead. Uh, I went through it when my when I lost my dad. It wasn't. It wasn't right after that. It wasn't just that, because I was holding on to my faith, trying to, and it was 
uh, following that, I was like just a matter of days, I got into a real bad accident and I wrecked the car and it was my fault. And I wrecked the car that my dad had bought me. And it was just like, you know what? It was after I had been praying and, you know, seeking the Lord for hours, just crying out because of what I was going through. And so for when it didn't work out my way, I <laughs> I remember you came actually to kind of get me. <laughs> mom, listen to the I said that live. Hit some hearts, mom. Come on, hit some hearts, little kid. Go ahead. You good? Hit some hearts for mama. I was trying to see what other people were saying. I'm hitting some hearts for you, mama. Go ahead. No, but yeah, it was when you uh, came to pick me up. And we were leaving, and you said, oh, Faith, you forgot your Bible. And I said, leave it. (laughs) (laughs) And you was like, don't do that, don't do that. But it it took, you know, time. It it wasn't really too long, but it did take some time for me to actually start seeing God through it all. You know, his hand and him being involved. So it it wasn't him abandoning me and ignoring me. He was actually involved. And it it shamed me uh, for actually feeling that way. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Anybody else want to have a human moment? I'm trying to think of one. Me too. I I know I've had them. I just, it's not coming to me right now. I'm trying to think of one, but God has been so awesome to me yeah and things in all my walk through life as a as a baby Christ and so forth I mean I, I had actually that God was there mm-hmm. you know and and um, I always trusted God but you know um, let, let me talk about this one when when I was going to Bible study and they were teaching me more tithing now. You know, I like to talk. Go, go on. Now. <laughs> you might want to talk about it. Right? <laughs> he was, God was, the, the pastor was teaching on tithing and things I just didn't understand, but he was opening it up. I was tithing, mm-hmm. but he, he he talked about tithing on the growth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I thought I was doing pretty good myself with what I was doing, but. So when I left there, when I left Bible study, I said, God, I sure would like to be able to do that time for my gross. Mm. And the next day at work, my supervisor gave, she said, Deborah, here's a, here's a, a card, a parking pass, and, and you don't have to pay $40 a month. I started praising God in the altar. I said, you have no idea what you just did. God answered that prayer right then. The next day, he answered the prayer because that $40 was what made a difference in me paying for the oil. And the the net, you know, that $40. So, So it's hard for me to sit down and say, oh, I had one of the moments. But but it's a blessing if you don't. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying you had to have had that right, moment. Right. What I'm saying is that listen, there are times when when uh, yeah. look, how many how many people in the Bible uh, went through moments? Job went through that moment. Yeah. Like he yeah. was hit. It seemed like he got he getting hit it, blow it, after it, blow it, after it, blow. It, and yeah. why Satan? The whole conversation in heaven, mm-hmm. Satan was having with God mm-hmm. was. If you if you do if I do this if you mm-hmm. let me do this he'll mm-hmm. curse you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, the whole time he was trying to affect yeah. his mouth. Yeah. yeah. You thought he was trying to affect his money. Yeah. He was trying to affect his mouth. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. He even got into his wife's ear and got mm-hmm. his wife to repeat yeah. the same thing that he right. said to God. Right. Won't you just curse God and die? Mm-hmm. Because the enemy will try to use because he he knows that the most powerful thing mm-hmm. in your person yes. is your mouth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's Life your mouth. And Life and death. Yes. That's right. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The doors open. Yes. Sunday the walls fell mm-hmm. yes. from a shop. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Listen, when when the Egyptians were chasing the children of Israel uh-huh. mm-hmm. 
And they were at the, uh, the, the uh, was it the Red Sea? Red sea. Uh -huh. The Bible says that, that when God removed the, the fire, Moses began to panic. Mm -hmm. And he says, God! And he begins to shout. And the Bible says, God says to Moses, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> Speak to it! That's right, that's right. <laughs> God says to Moses, why are you yelling at me? You've been with me long enough. You should know this by now. Speak to it. That's right. Wow. That's right. Wow. When are you going to open your mouth? Jesus. Wow. Speak to it. Wow. wow. When you made that prayer, what were you saying? God, and, 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 and listen, God, Sometimes we'll just give you a little bit of encouragement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Speak to it. Mm -hmm. Speak through it. Mm -hmm. Seem like you're just getting hit after hit after hit after hit. Keep speaking through it. Mm -hmm. Keep speaking to it. Yes. Go ahead. Um, Elder Rafa, she said, uh, one of her moments, she said, waiting for vindication is sometimes so hard. Ooh. She said, I was overlooked for a job and all the co-workers witnessed it. It was so hard, but God showed up. And, and for some of us, our, our, our season of waiting is a season of testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. See, I know how you act when you get what you want. How do you act when you don't get what you want? Wow. Wow. Yeah. And see, you know what? And that's what I say about this kidney failure. You know, this is what's been one of the challenging illnesses that I had to deal with, but I still got to praise God. Yes. And I still, I believe that God will heal the kidney. Yes. He, he's going to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. How we react yes. in our time of struggle, mm -hmm. pain, disappointment. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Loneliness. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. God, why? Why I'm seeing all my other friends, you know, move up and do this and do this, and I'm still right here. Mm -hmm. God says, "How do you react during that time?" Listen, mm -hmm. your, your test of faith is see, your call is not their call. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't watch other people's. Marriage. Don't watch other people's pockets. Don't watch other people's leveling up. Mm -hmm. I said, just focus on Him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Yeah. But use your mouth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're quick to use our mouth when somebody disrespect us. <laughs> we don't need no training in that. Nope. <laughs> I said to a co-worker yesterday, uh, he, you know, he, he was saying, made a statement, and, you know, he just used some foul language. Normally, he'd be like, you know, you know, my bad, John, my bad. But he was using a little bit of foul language. And I said, come on, man. He, he, said, he, he, said, he said, my bad. He said, just sometimes it feels better using that word. <laughs> I, said, I said, sometimes it do feel like that drives the point home a little bit better. I'm sure. I said, but we got to learn how to say you know, whatever things are good, whatever things are just, let that come out of your mouth. Um, I always give, give honor to Pastor Brian. He one time told me, he said, John, um, he said, let your fruit speak, not your frustration. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. Yeah. He said, That's let good. your fruit speak, not your frustration. Mm -hmm. So if your frustration is speaking, then maybe our fruit is gone bad. Ooh. Mm. Maybe wow. we've allowed anger and bitterness to Come in. Yeah. cause our, our 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 fruit wow. to go bad, to spoil. And so this wow. is why we need to get connected with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Chains falling. Yes. Chains falling. Can you tell me, oh, God has given me this power in my in my tongue? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yes. Stop speaking to your death. Mm. But they were praying and praising. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. See, praising is easier than praying. 
Because <laughs> praising requires discipline. Does anybody connect with that? I would tell people that if you're dealing with insomnia, pray. That devil of insomnia will drop off of you if you start praying. You can't sleep. Stop praying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That devil will drop off of you if you start praying. Satan doesn't want you praying. So I would encourage folks to join us on 9 12 at 12 o'clock mid our prayer <laughs> call. Amen. It's just a way to encourage one another. Yes. Yes. Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas worshiped God. They prayed and worshiped God. The chains began to fall. Mm -hmm. One can put a thousand flight, two can put ten thousand. Yes. One, two, touch and agree, asking anything, it shall be done. Yes. What's the first thing we want to do when we get hurt at, at church? Let's just use the church, for example. We're going to yeah. isolate ourselves. Never go to another church. It's the first thing you say, man, I'm done with church. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Satan's like, yes! That's right. And then we use excuses like, I am the church. Mm -hmm. Let me correct you, you are not. Ouch. Let me scare you. Shake some things up. I mean, let me explain. The word church comes from this word, the Greek word ecclesia, mm -hmm. right? Church means the gathering. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Uh -huh. You are a Christian by yourself. Mm -hmm. When two of us come together, we're the church. Okay. There we mm -hmm. go. All right. There we go. Satan can get us. When we are isolated. Yes. The Bible says like a roaring lion. He goes about seeking whom he may devour. How do lions hunt? Now they're the biggest and baddest. One of the biggest and baddest animals out there. But they look for the ones that are by yes. themselves. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yes. God wants to break chains. And he says I've given you the key. But you've got to turn it. you got to turn the key. Open your mouth. Begin speaking to that thing. Yeah. Speak to your storm. Speak to your storm. Come on, Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. Psalm 91, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Um, I know Lon is a little sleepy right now. Uh, Lon, come here, please. I want you to catch this. Stand behind me. Stand behind me. Now, this is what it means to be under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. It means you're so close that his shadow is falling over you. Yes. Mm -hmm. see, see, you can't be under the shadow at, at a distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. So all of the promises associated with Psalm 91 are disqualified because that's the prerequisite. Mm -hmm. He that dwells under the shadow of the Most High shall abide. The, uh, he that dwells in mm -hmm. the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Most High. I'll say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Yeah. It talks about, you know, God will elevate you. Why? Because you're in a secret place. Because I'm so close to him. Right? Mm -hmm. God will begin opening doors for you just because you're close to him. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's why we named this, this, this ministry Psalm 91. First of all, they didn't like my the other names that came up. <laughs> so, his church. <laughs> <laughs> His as in Jesus church. I had a meaning behind it, y'all. <laughs> but my rib and Mama Deborah. <laughs> that was the first name that Mama Deborah didn't say <clears throat> when she heard it. That song, oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Jeremiah liked it too. He was a uh, person. Amen. But, but again, this is why we're doing what we're doing. 
right? God wants to do and perform. And he, he wants to show himself real to us. Yeah. That's the good yeah. thing about our God, is that he wants to show himself real to us. Yeah. I, I, I need some, can somebody give me something. Something, something. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, how, how do you handle? Let, let's play this out. The next time something happens, your tire blows. How do you respond? Hypothetical. Not hypothetical. Hypothetical. I'm talking about the hours. <laughs> go, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, brother. Oh, I'll just. Oh, oh okay. Uh, take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. Get me calm my nerves. Calm your nerves. What else? I'm, I'm waiting for one thing. We just talked about it here. Thank you. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Oh. Praise God. Tell, tell me how you handle that. I just just had an experience just before Bible study. I almost didn't make it tonight. <laughs> Come to find out that our security list for re- the reunion, mm-hmm. they rejected it. Mm. Oh, and, wow. and then they sent us a layout of how they wanted the security list to look. We asked them if they had something to show it to us. And I could have created it myself right there. But no, they wait till here the ninth hour. Mm-hmm. We gotta have the list to them before Saturday, and this is Wednesday. Now we had to recreate this entire list the way they wanted it. Mm-hmm. And I almost didn't make it tonight. And then I said, I started it. I should have prayed right there. That's where I did. Mm-hmm. I got upset mm-hmm. about it. Like, why they couldn't tell us this before? And da da da, but but God, mm-hmm. because when I talked to my classmate, the one who was running things down in Virginia, she said, "Don't worry about it, Deborah. Go to Bible study." She said, <laughs> "She said Karen gonna create the list." I said, "Oh, okay, good. Well, I'm in Bible study. I'll talk to you." <laughs> <laughs> how how we handle things? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How are you gonna handle it? I'm gonna call on somebody, Crystal. How you handle it? <laughs> Well, remember what he's done before mm, and know right. he'll come through again. Yes. So just in the middle of the frustration, remember the past mm-hmm. ways he brought me through mm-hmm. and believe this will be added to the list. Mm. Here we go. So I'm going to use this one the next uh-huh. time. That's uh-huh. right. Uh-huh. Job said, though he slay me, yes. yet shall I trust him. Yes. Meaning no matter what happens. Yes. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. See, I, we don't want that, that scenario that I painted earlier to be a norm. Where I'm, I'm, I'm doubting God. We want to get to a point where we're not going through that. We don't have those dips. Yes. That, we are, that, that, that no matter what happens, though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Yes. Yet shall I trust him. You lost your job. They just they just gave you the layoff notice. Yeah. Yeah. Though he slay me, yet shall I trust him. Mm-hmm. Yet shall I trust him. Yes. God, I trust you. Somebody just say, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. God, I trust you. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you. I trust you with my family. Yes. Yes. I trust you with my finances. Yes. God, I, I, I trust you with my treasure. I trust you, God. I trust you with my faith. I trust you with every area of my life. God, I trust you. Like I share that testimony of where I was because I'm saying, listen, I realized from that moment. And from that moment, I said, you know what? I got to change my language. Yes. Yes. I got to change my language. God, I trust you. I trust you. We didn't think we could turn this place around in seven days. Come on. But, God. That was a feat. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, but God. I believe. No, no, I, I, I knew we could. <laughs> but it was someone didn't, didn't, didn't see it. It wasn't a didn't believe. It just said, I can't see it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's okay. You just got to say, man, how do we do this? This was God. God preordains things. He preordained yes. us to have cheers. Yeah. He yes. preordained us yes. to have yes. the, 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 the everything downstairs. People free cheers. Just yes. free cheers. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yes. 
We about to, y'all saw those beat up kids that I was about to order. <laughs> Trying to save money. <laughs> I went home, I went into my closet, and I said, God, please don't let me, please don't, please don't let me have to bring them. We had a meeting about these chairs, didn't we? Yes, yes. I put it on y'all, because I didn't like them. I didn't want them. I didn't want those chairs. I went home and I said, God, I really don't want those chairs. Those chairs. I said, Lord, that's, that's not represent. I said, look, I will go yeah, with them. We gonna, we gonna, I said, God, we're going to go with them because this will be, we're going to make it happen. We're going to make it do what it, what it do. I said, but God, I said, and it wasn't even 24 hours. God opened up the yeah, door. Yes. 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 Say, trust God. Trust God. Act like that child. Remember, we played that on Sunday. I don't want to grow up. Mm-hmm. I'm a toy one. Like, stop being so stop grown. Come on. Wow. <laughs> stop being so teen. <laughs> Go back to the time when you believed. Yes. Come on. God, I believe. I believe, God. Everything you say, I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm walking in favor because I believe. God says, I'm the head, not the tail. Yeah. Yes. Right. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the Come lender, on. not the borrower. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So God, if you said I'm the lender and not the borrower, that means you've got to supply my need. That's yeah. right. And I'm beginning to declare this. And I want you to begin to declare this. Every day you wake up, God, I am the lender, not the borrower. Yeah. I don't care what it looks like today. I may have some credit card debt and I may be, have some borrowing debt, but God is wiping that away. Yeah. God is or get, providing me the money to That's pay right. that off right. so that I am now the lender and now people are coming to me. Now you got to understand that every blessing is a burden. Please understand that. That means people going to stop coming to you. That's right. When God bless, people going to stop coming. Mm-hmm. So just, just, just sharing this as we go through this this chapter, just this this lesson on in the midst of our trouble, mm-hmm. in the midst of our tribulation, we've got to get we got to connect with God. Don't allow anything to disconnect us with God. Yes. Cut off your television yes. show. Cut off whatever it is. Stop running to tell this person. Stop being the first person to call this person. Mm-hmm. Call God. Get in yes. love with God. Yes. Yeah. Let's close our eyes and go before the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this another day. Thank you. Thank you for this another time, Lord. Yes. Lord God, we just pray that your hand of blessing be upon um, your people as we gather here today, tonight. Lord God, we pray for safe travels as we go to and from in our different destinations, oh Lord. Strengthen us on every side, Lord God. Those that are making, that are traveling, um, that are working at night, Lord God, we pray for tra- safe travels and rest. Yes, Lord God, in Jesus' name, glory. Now, if there's anyone watching, maybe you're here in the building, but if you're watching, you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. That's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. And you need to do that right now. Just You can do that right now by just repeating this. Um, Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a Savior. I repent of all my wrongs. I believe that you died on the cross, but I also know that after three days you rose from the grave with all power in your hands. Yes. I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth that Lord, you are God. Yes. In yes. Jesus' name, Jesus. make me new. Come in my heart, reshape me. Yes, Lord. You be the potter, I'll be the clay. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Oh, Lord God, those that are watching, those that are here, Lord God, we pray that you begin to mold, Lord God, even show forth your love towards them, Lord God, in yes. Jesus' name, as a sign, just as a sign. Just like Mama Deborah talked about the parking pass. Just give them a sign, Lord. Yes. We're not seeking after signs, but Lord, just show them, yes. show them your love. Now, if you're watching and maybe you have pain in your body, I want you to place your hand in the area of that pain. And, and if you can reach or as close to that area, I want you to lift the other hand up before the Lord and just begin to pray this. Lord God, I receive your healing in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, I receive your healing in Jesus' name. Come, come, come. Now, if there's any anything that we've done, Lord God, 
that has brought this about, Lord God. We pray that you cleanse us. The Bible says, yes. he says let the elders mm -hmm. anoint with oil. Yes. Pray, and if there's any sins, let they be forgiven them. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we pray healing. Healing would flow even across these airwaves, Lord God. Yes, healing. God. Healing in the building. Healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Let's begin to shout wherever you are. Yeah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 If that's you and you say, I want to connect with this ministry. I want to be a partner in this ministry. If that's you, um, just type it in the chat and say join. Yeah. If you type in, in the chat, join. One of our leaders will reach out to you. But we want to open up the, 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 the door of fellowship or the uh, uh, right hand of fellowship, as we say, in Jesus' name. Or even pray that if this is not the house that they are assigned to, that you would help them to find that yeah. house. Yes. Lord God, yes. Yes. direct them to a Bible-believing church. In Jesus' name, Jesus pray. Name. Amen. 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 Listen, if you said any one of uh, prayer to any one of those, you can type in the chat. If you're watching it a lot, um, saved. If you give your life to the Lord, you can type in saved. Yeah. Um, and one of us, our leaders will reach out to you. You can type in healed, right? And because it's always good to share testimony. Mm -hmm. You feel like if the pain left your body, and just begin to shout, amen, giving God the glory. Yes. Um, but we like to know that. It's just it's, it's always encouraging yes. to other believers. Amen. And so with that being said, yes. And join. And um, and also with regards joining if you uh, want to join this ministry, type in join. Amen. amen. Now um, um before we close out the service we don't want to give we don't want to leave without giving folks an opportunity to show a seed into the ministry. Amen. Amen. And we have a couple of different ways in which to give. If you're in the building, you can make right make checks payable to Psalm 91 Ministries. Um, we have the cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign Psalm 91 Ministries. Um, and then also we have Zell. Uh, our Zell email is Pastor J dot Psalm 91 Ministries at gmail dot com. And also there's a link in the chat for PayPal if you to go to directly through our website. Amen. So that being said, um, First Lady, if you don't mind just coming up and just close this out in a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. The right in hell. <laughs> That we've had together here and in, in going into your word making your word um uh displaying your word uh, uh showing it off so yeah. that people can connect even more father we ask that they are each and every person that is able to witness it father let it be seeds in their heart that they can plant lord you plant it and you water it and you bring the increase yeah, yes, god. Thank you, we thank you god we bless your name we praise you we ask, Father, that as we go our separate ways, that you keep each and every one of us safely to our destinations, blessing our homes. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, amen. 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 amen.